The story of Icarus begins with his father Daedalus, whom we learn from Greek writers such as Homer, Ovid, etc. There are some variations in the details, but the main theme remains the same. Daedalus was a bit of a da Vinci of his time, known as a great craftsman, artist, and basically a genius. In fact, even the meaning of his name is to work artfully, or of knowledge. His story begins in Athens, his homeland. He was loved and respected by the people. He enjoyed the attention he got every once in a while. He had a nephew who was just as good as he was. His nephew's growing fame began to disturb him, and one day, while confronting him, Daedalus pushed him and accidentally killed him, which led to his exile. He then sailed to the island Crete, where he made his way to the king's court and served him as an advisor. Meanwhile, King Minos's wife, Pasiphae, who had been cursed by Poseidon to be in love with a bull, was looking for a proper way to be with her lover. The irony was that very bull Pasiphae fell in love with was the one Poseidon gave to the king for him to sacrifice in his name, but because he felt pity for it, the king failed to do so. Yeah, a little harsh way to get back on someone, I know. Anyhow, seeing Daedalus' capabilities, Pasiphae went ahead and asked for his help in the oppressing matter. Daedalus, being such a matchmaker, quickly began to come up with a solution. Finally, he created a mechanical bull, a precise replica, in which Pasiphae could get into to finally be with her lover. She got pregnant after the intercourse and gave birth to a beast that is half man and half bull. Of course, the king, not being thrilled about his stepson's identity, decided to lock him up. Naturally, a creature of this might and magnitude wouldn't be able to cage like a regular man, so the king demanded Daedalus to build a maze and imprison the Minotaur in there. But the Minotaur was angry. His rageful stumps were strong enough to cause earthquakes. The people were restless. The king had to do something, so he decided to give sacrifice to the beast. He sent word for seven people to be prepared as a sacrifice for the Minotaur. This right was to continue every nine years, until one day a man named Theseus killed the beast, got out of the maze, and took the king's daughter with him. The king was mad, Theseus was surely had help, but from who? Who would it be if not the man who built the place? He then imprisoned Daedalus and his son Icarus on top of a tower. Daedalus was desperate, there didn't seem to be a way out of here. While he was thinking for a way out, his eyes stumbled upon some feathers resting on the surface on top of the tower. The idea struck him. He started to build wings by waxing the feathers together. Finally, the day of the great escape arrived. He and his son Icarus were about to fly towards their freedom. He gave the instructions to his son. Do not fly too close to the sun, for it may melt the wax and you may fall. And do not fly too close to the sea either, for it would dampen the wings and make them heavier. Hence, you would still fall. Then, one by one, they took the leap of faith. Flying in the midair, they find the laws of nature. The people from the land mistook them for gods. Daedalus was known to reside close to the boundaries between gods and men because of his inventions. But now the boundaries were no more. At the beginning, they flew between the sun and sea peacefully. But soon after, enthralled by the flight, Icarus began to rise higher towards the sun. His father cried out to warn him once more, but in vain. It was too late. The wings began to melt, and Icarus fell down to his death. The sea fell named after him following that day, the Icarian Sea, and the island he washed up upon, the Icarian Island, which is on the west side of present-day Samos. As for the moral of the story, the first and clear one we see is disregarding the advice of the Elder. In today's world, we need the wisdom of the elders the most, as we always have. The wise brain is mature, where a young and immature one takes risks on a whim and goes way beyond than he should. In the end, he ends up destroying himself. Whereas the wise know the outcome, knows what is at stake, yet only takes a reasonable risk, not more than necessary, yet not less than needs to be done, and most importantly, does not get tempted by his short-lived success for he knows it is the destination that counts, not the small peaks of victory every now and then, so he remains vigilant and perseverant at all times. The second piece of advice we get from the story is in the part where Icarus rises high towards the sun, which is associated with the pride of men, warning him that the higher he rises above with pride, the quicker and the severer his fall will be. 
Yet, not many talk about the second warning in that part, which is staying away from getting too close to the sea that can be interpreted as too much humility, for it may also be one's downfall. This is the devaluation of oneself and a sure ride to his suffering. So the solution is always in balance, not too much yet not too little, which always takes practice. So what do you think? Are there any other lessons you derive from the story? If so, please share and remember, if you know where to look in life, there is always a lesson to learn.